Welcome to Elliott High Network. I'm your host, Amanda, from Woodrow Wilson High School. The Washington Teachers Union has launched a major initiative called Learning Doesn't Stop Lessons on TV. Let's check out Mr. John Tay Lee from Calvin Coolidge High School and see what we can learn today. Hi, I am John Tay Lee, and welcome to Chemistry in the Kitchen. <laughs> the, reason, the reason why it's called Chemistry in the Kitchen is because today, we're going to be doing chemical experiments from, you guessed it, the kitchen. Everything that we are doing today can be found in your refrigerator, cabinet, or pantry. And every experiment is safe. However, please remember, no matter what experiment you do in the home, please do it under adult supervision. Our first experiment today, we're going to create a rubber egg. When we think of rubber, we think of the tip of a pencil, that eraser, it is hard and uh, it is bouncy. But is an egg, a normal egg that like we have here, is that egg bouncy? Let's see. Ooh, it's not bouncy. Let's have a closer look at what happened. As you can see, the egg broke and all of its contents came spilling out. Yeah, so now, I will, now I'm gonna need a fresh egg. Step number one, take a fresh egg, put it in a pot of water, and place the water on the stove, and turn the stove on. What we want to do is create a hard boiled egg. A hard boiled egg means the egg is cooked all the way through. This should take roughly around 10 to 15 minutes. Please do this step under adult supervision. Next. Now, while we're waiting on that, I already have a hard boiled egg. And what we're gonna do, place the egg inside of a cup, and we're gonna take regular white vinegar. Um, it, it should be noted that whenever we are doing chemistry, it's please, 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 always label everything. We're gonna pour the vinegar, inside the container that has the egg, and we're gonna cover the egg. And we're gonna let this sit for 12 to 24 hours. Once again, a hard boiled egg inside of a glass or a regular container and cover it with vinegar. When that happens, a very special thing is happening and I would like for us to look, to look at and see. Do you see the bubbles that are being created, the bubbles surrounding the egg. Ah, oh. so I would like for us to remember that. And we're gonna go over why we are seeing bubbles in about one minute. I've already have two eggs here that, have, that has been sitting for 24 hours. The first egg is my hard boiled egg, and I'm going to use a spoon and gently remove the egg. Let's have a closer look of what that looks like. You can see here. The shell has completely dissolved in the vinegar. And oh, wow. As you can see, it's bouncy. <laughs> we just created a rubber egg. Oh, it is very firm, just like a rubber eraser. See? You could mash it and and it bounces. No mess. Why is this happening? The reason why this is happening is because of a chemical reaction, which we are going to go over. But first, let's look at the parts of an egg. Pretend this is the inside of an, of an egg. And in the middle, we have the yolk which is the yellow part. The white 
or the clear part covering, surrounding the yolk is called the albumen. And then, which is the blue. So the blue is going to be the albumen. And the yellow part is the yolk. Now the albumen is wrapped up in a very thin membrane, just like this. So now we have three parts. We have the yolk, which is this black dot. The blue represents the albumin, or the very clear part of the egg. This plastic wrap represents the very thin um, membrane layer, in which is called the inner membrane. And then lastly, this white paper is going to represent, you guessed it, the shell of the of the egg. When we put this egg in vinegar, the vinegar dissolves the shell. And all we are left with are the three parts: the yolk, which is the yellow, the clear, which is represented by the blue balloon, albumin, and then this nice inner membrane. The inner membrane is permeable. Permeable means, well, it's semi-permeable. Semi-permeable means certain things can pass in and certain things can pass out. Not everything is able to pass in, only certain things. I would like for you all to reach and to do some research and find out what things are allowed to pass a, a semi-permeable membrane in our body cells. Now, here is the chemical equation. The eggshell is made, out of, made up of calcium carbonate. Ca is calcium and CO3 is the carbonate. When we mix that with the vinegar, and vinegar is a diluted, uh, vinegar is diluted acetic acid. Vinegar is diluted acetic acid, which we have here. When we mix those two things together, with, as we see here, we're creating a chemical reaction. First, we have calcium acetate, that, that will be found in the solution. We also create water, H2O, and then lastly, carbon dioxide. And we are able to see carbon dioxide by looking at these tiny bubbles. So let's have a closer look. The tiny bubbles, that is carbon dioxide. And once again, no more hard shell. And that hard shell is made up of, of what? You, and that is correct, calcium carbonate. And just for fun, I put a raw egg inside of the vinegar and I let it set for 24 hours. And as you can see, look, look at what is happening. The shell is being dissolved and the yolk, the inner part of the egg, is starting to come out. I wonder what this looks like when we take it out of solution. So I'm going to pour the solution into a bowl. And hold the contents. And as you can see, this is what we are left with. Up close, I'm gonna just lift this up. We now have a naked egg, and what's left over is, look at this, that inner membrane. Look at it. It's all nice and rubbery. So we now have the inner membrane. Let's have one more look. As we can see, we have the yolk. We have the albumin, which is the clear liquid, and this is the inner membrane. Because the hard part of the egg was dissolved, thanks to the vinegar, which is, remember? Where did you go? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. In which we have the vinegar, 
which is a diluted, a diluted acetic acid. So how does this egg and vinegar represent what's happening in the real world? Well, remember the eggshell, that's that hard part on the outside, one of its um, chemical components is calcium, same as our teeth. And vinegar is an acid. And as we can see how the acid wore away this hard part here of the egg, that's what will happen to our teeth. That's why it is extremely important to drink a lot of water, not drink so many soda or carbonated drinks, and uh, always brush your teeth after every meal. All right, thank you for joining me. <laughs> I could do this all day. Thank you, and um, thank you for joining me in Chemistry in the Kitchen, and today we created a rubber egg. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of Chemistry in the Kitchen. <laughs> the reason why it's called Chemistry in the Kitchen is because we're gonna be doing chemistry from the kitchen. Remember, everything that we do today can be found in your pantry, your cabinets, or your refrigerator. And all of our experiments are safe. However, please, whenever you are doing a chemical experiment, please do it under adult supervision. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Our last one in part one, we made a rubber egg. Do you still have your rubber egg? Is this still bouncing? <laughs> well, today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit differently. We're gonna make a non-Newtonian fluid. That's, how, that's a big word, isn't it? Non-Newtonian fluid. That's just a fancy word for saying we're gonna make slime. And it's gonna be really fun. While we're making our slime that I am going to go over why the slime is called a non-Newtonian fluid. All right, so let's get started. Before we do anything, any chemical procedure, make sure that you have, make sure you have the procedure handy and as a, a reference. The first thing we need is a half a cup of glue. As you can see, I use clear glue. So I have a half a cup of glue and the recipe also calls for a half a cup of water. Yep, half a cup of water. We're gonna pour that in and mix it together. It is extremely important in chemistry, whenever you are working with different types of substances, is to label everything. Label everything. And we want to mix this up really good. And we have this nice gluey solution. And I'm going to follow my advice and label it. So now we have half a cup of water and a half a cup of glue. Because as you can see, the glue is pretty clear, and we don't want to miss, and we don't want to mistake this for another substance. See? Our glue is pretty clear. Oops, I wasted a little bit of glue. That is okay, because sometimes in science, it does get a little messy. Now that my hands are nice and clean, the next part is, do we want to add some food coloring? Yellow, green, red, blue, which one should I do? I like blue. So I'm going to add some blue. And we're going to mix this up. And as we can see now, our solution is blue. So in there is a half a cup of water and a half a cup of glue. The next part re re requires a bowl. And we need one cup of water, which I already have labeled. And we need one teaspoon of borax. Borax powder. One teaspoon. 
and we want to mix this together. Borax is a detergent enhancer, which means if you want to put a little bit of borax in your next load of laundry, it is going to give your laundry detergent superpowers. We want to mix this up until all the borax is dissolved. It is dissolved. And we're going to slowly add our glue solution. Slowly. And when we're adding it, we want to mix it up really good. Add a little bit more. And this time I promise I won't spill it. But I want you to see what's starting to happen inside of the bowl. Oh, can you see? See, it's starting to form this slime-like mixture already. See? Can we see this? And let's just pour the rest on in there. Stir this up really good. Ooh. I'm going to pour it in a bowl, a clear bowl, so you can see what is actually happening. Even though we have a little bit of liquid, that is okay. Oh, did you hear that big glob? Put this to the side. And now, as you can see, looking at the bowl, we have this slime mixture. Look at it. Ooh. And I'm not sure about you, but I do want to get my hands messy. So we're going to play with it. Oh, look at it. Let's put this bowl back over here to um, catch any residual fluids that's flowing out. <gasps> look. And we can mess it up and squeeze it. Oh, that thing is pretty stuck together, is it not? And even though that you would think it, it would be sticky because of the glue, it's actually not. It's actually fun. So the more we play with it, <laughs> the firmer it is going to become. And don't worry about the extra liquid in the other bowl. So the reason why this is called a non-Newtonian fluid is because, on, uh, because a Newtonian fluid, its viscosity or ability to flow is strictly dependent on the temperature. If we heat a liquid, it's going to flow faster than a cold liquid. And that would be a Newtonian fluid. But a non-Newtonian fluid is something that changes its viscosity or the ability to flow, not based on temperature, but based on other factors like pressure. See? Let's see how this thing flows. Is it flowing fast or slow? Ah, uh, pretty slow, huh? Now let's see if we squeeze it. Uh, the rate of the flow changed. Did it go faster or slower? So, slime, we created a non-Newtonian fluid, in which I would like for you to research what are some other non-Newtonian fluids that we come encounter with in the real world. Well, this has been episode two of Chemistry in the Kitchen, and we made non-Newtonian fluid slime. <laughs> look, look, look at it. I'm having too much fun. Thank you for joining me, and uh, tune in for um, part three 
and where we want to make invisible ink. Ooh. Ah. Hi, I am John Tay Lee, and welcome to Chemistry in the Kitchen. <laughs> the reason why it's called Chemistry in the Kitchen is because we're in my kitchen and we are going to do chemistry. Every item that we use today can be found in your pantry, cabinet, or refrigerator. And every experiment is safe. However, be sure that whenever you are doing chemical experiments, it's please be under adult supervision. All right, this is part three. Remember in part one of Chemistry in the Kitchen, we made a rubber egg, mine is still bouncing. Part number two, what did we do? Hmm, can you all remember? Ah, that was, that was right. We made a non-Newtonian liquid. Well, a non-Newtonian fluid. <laughs> and now for this one, we are going to make invisible ink. And it's really simple. You can now write a secret message into your friends and nobody will know except you and your friend. First, what, what we need is water and baking soda. Remember, whenever we are working with um, chemical ingredients is to label everything. So here, we're going to make equal parts, well, we're going to mix equal parts of water and baking soda. So right now, I have one tablespoon of water. And whenever we want to measure something dry, we want to, and I'm going to show you, we want to overfill it. And then when we overfill it, we're going to take the back of a spoon and just scrape the top off. So, and it looks like this. So we overfilled it and we scraped the top off. And so now we have a perfect one tablespoon of baking soda. We're going to mix it up. and mix it up until all of the baking soda is dissolved. And as you can see, put this here, it is nice and white. To make it invisible, we're gonna work with, you guessed it, white paper. Because my handwriting is not the best, I'm gonna draw a picture. So I'm gonna just take the baking soda here, and let's just draw a smiley face. And I'm keep going back inside the baking soda mixture. And I'm using my finger. And you can use a Q-tip, a uh, um, toothpick, cotton swabs, and you're gonna set this to the side and you're gonna let it dry. Now, let me get this off of my hands. Good little towel here. Once it dries, you won't be able to tell what's on the sheet of paper unless you make it visible. What I have here is grape soda. And when you brush the paper with the grape soda, dry this off. You can now see your hidden message, the smiley face. How did this work? Well, when the grape soda, or the grape juice, I'm sorry, interacted with the baking soda, this is an acid-base reaction. And here is our pH indicator. The numbers one through six represent an acid. The numbers eight through 14 represent a base. When we mix these, these two together, we call that uh, what happened was an acid-base reaction. 
thus causing a color change. What I would like for you to research is which one is the acid and which one is the base. Is it the grape juice or the baking soda? Secondly, I would also like for you all to re research what other type of acid-base reactions happen all around us. And lastly, I want you all to research, um, well, some of you all should know this and some of you all should, um, may not know it, is what state of matter is the baking soda and what state of matter is the grape juice. Well, today has been great. We learned about acid-base reactions. We learned how to write a secret, uh, um, secret message using <laughs> baking soda and water. Thank you so much for joining me today in Chemistry in the Kitchen. You have a great day. Bye-bye.